Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so for those who have just joined us, uh, thank you for coming and joining today's session on um, service enhancement through robotic process automation, um, or RPA, and digital marketing. So my name is Faith, and I'm part of the SDPOD team. We're excited to bring um, today's session to you. Uh, in the meantime, while we wait for a couple more um, participants to join us, we would just uh, like to invite you to kindly rename yourselves with um, the naming convention that you see in the chat. So that would be um, starting with the name that you indicated in the registration form, underscore the name of your organization. So this will help us to better engage with one another and also um, be able to um, track the attendance for our own purposes. Thank you.
Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So um, it's already 3.05, so we'll probably make a start now. Um, welcome to today's Capability Circles Tech Up Series session on service enhancement through robotic process automation and digital marketing. My name is Faith, and I'm part of the SDT OD team at NCSS, and we are excited to be bringing today's session to you. So um, before we start, just some administrative points to take note of. I'm sure everyone is familiar with all the Zoom functions by now. Uh, so we would really appreciate if we can um, mute our mics during the presentations so that we can all enjoy good video, uh, good audio quality. Um, and let's meet face to face. Uh, to clarify, I mean, let's switch on our cameras. So um, go ahead, adjust your outfit, brush your hair if you want to, and uh, yeah, switch on your cameras and let's meet each other. Um, also, if you have any questions during the session, please indicate them in the Zoom chat and we will address them during the Q&A segment later. Also, if you wish to react to anything that is said during the session, such as giving an applause, feel free to use the reaction button. Okay, so before we dive in, just a gentle reminder for everyone to um, kindly rename yourselves with the naming convention um, in the chat that you see. So uh, start off with the name you indicated in the registration form, underscore the name of your organization. Great, let's make a start. So for today, uh, we are very excited to have our guest speakers with us from um, Singapore Polytechnic. Uh, and they are from two schools in Singapore Polytechnic, namely the School of Business and the Media Arts and Design School. A huge thank you to our speakers for joining us today. And um, we will leave them to introduce more about themselves during their respective segments. Um, so now maybe uh, we will just take an overview of the program for today. Um, it's quite straightforward. So we will start off with um, some context sharing by NCSS, um, followed by sharings from our guest speakers. Um, and then after that, we would go into the resource sharing and Q&A segments before seeking your feedback on um, today's session. So thereafter, the session will end officially. So um, to start off the context setting by NCSS, I'm curious, why did you all decide to come for today's session? Uh, you don't have to answer me now, but perhaps you can keep that in mind. Um, as my colleague Anna and I seek to paint the context um, of digital transformation in the sector and how RPA and digital marketing fits in with that. So as you would have already heard, um, the Organizational Health Framework for Social Services or OHFSS is a framework that NCSS launched for the sector to diagnose and monitor your organizational health over time. Uh, and as you would have also seen in our EDMs that we have shared previously, today's uh, capability session will focus on two domains under the OHFSS, namely digitalization and communications and partnerships. So we hope that this session will strengthen your capabilities in these domains and you'll be able to put your learning into practice, uh, especially for organizations that have already done your self-assessment and found that these two domains are areas of improvement for your agency. If you're curious to find out more, uh, we will be sharing with you uh, some of the, uh, the QR code and the links um, that you can, uh, we'll be sharing with you the QR code later and then the link will be shared in the chat so that um, you can click on that link and uh, start on your OHFSS and self-assessment journey. So um, don't worry if you miss all these details, we will share it again at the end and uh, we will be also sending this information to you after the session. So with that, let me pass the time to my colleague Anna to share more about how today's speakers and topics fit with the sector's transformation in the digitalization domain. Anna, please. Thank you, everyone. Hi, um, uh, my name is Anna from uh, NCSS uh, Digital Assessment Team. I think some of you have been worked with me for quite some time before. Sorry, Anna. I think you're a bit soft. Okay. Can everybody hear me now? Yeah, that's better. better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So I wanted to start off with these uh, pictures. Uh, one, two and a half years ago, that was my first encounter about RPA. Honestly, I was quite surprised in this Friday afternoon, um, we have almost like 200 people sign up for this um, webinar. It must be something really in right now that everybody wanted to know about this um, RPA and digital um, marketing launch that we're launching. Now, um, two and a half years ago, I actually attended um, 
launch of the capability circle. If you see yourself here in the picture, you can put some reaction here. So I know that you are inside. Okay. Now, we actually learned quite a lot of um, a future technology at that time, two and a half years ago. You know, there was like grab, you know, grab jobs and all these things. Yeah, uh, uh, RPA. So I was, you know, I was very, very impressed. Yeah. Basically, you can use AI for everything in the future. Yeah, obviously, I never get a great job. That's why I'm still in, uh, in NCSS here. <laughs> okay, so now if you look at it here, this is one of the class that I attended about robotic process automations. I was so impressed, especially when the speaker talked about how reliable RPA is, you know. They are reliable, they are consistent, they don't complain when expected to work. Tirelessly, 24 by 7. I thought this is the worker I want. <laughs> okay. So after the class, I actually come and talk to him immediately. Okay. And of course, because he is a handsome young chap. Yeah. Okay. So I talked to him and asked him. The first thing I asked him is, hey, how much uh, to implement this RPA? You know? And he said, well, you know, in around 20, 30K per process. So per project is usually about 200K, 100 to 200K. So the moment I hear this price, well, my heart was broken. Yeah, Whatever he say, I couldn't really think of it anymore. I couldn't remember anymore. Okay. Until early this year, about January this year, I met two handsome guys here from Singapore Polytechnic, David and Daryl. They are actually come to approach NCSS and tell us that um, they are exploring getting their students to help develop solution for a course using RPA. Wow, my eyes big, big, you know, because I know how much the cost for RPA. And they want to partner with NCSS, you know, to, to exploring this partnering on this. So it's a win-win solution, right? Their student has a chance to practice to develop the board for RPA and our SSA will have a chance to get for the you know, RPA solutions at the low bono cost. Yeah, so how, of course we agree to partner with them, okay? Because part of the uh, IDP, Industry Digital Plan for Social Service is to engage with ecosystem partners like Singapore Polytechnic, to collaborate, to co-create, and to learn from each other and gather support you know, on the digital initiative. But of course, the first thing in my mind is, can your student do a good job or not? Because this is like McKinsey, EY, you know, Deloitte, KPMG, who do this RPA. So I'm not so sure whether the student can do a good job. And I asked um, David and Daryl whether they can do a pilot without SSA. One of the purpose is to find out what is the sectoral process that we have. The second thing is I wanted to know the quality of the RPA. Oh, okay, so here are all our RPA heroes. I hope one, SDSA and Blossom World come aboard with this pilot. And with the pilot, we have, they have developed 12 processes that they really need, which is our sector really need. They work so hard, so hard to the point that, you know, the students and the teachers and the lecturer, including the staff, to the point that I thought they are the robot themselves. And we even attend the trainings, okay? So um, Singapore Poly actually create a training, customize, customize the training according to the social service um, sectors is, uh, with a use case that is so useful that after the training, you can actually come out and implement some of them immediately. Yeah, so here are some of the pictures of the trainings. We have about 40 participants in this pilot. How was the uh, RPA implementation like? It's not for me to say, okay? These are some of the testimonials from Tai Hua Kwan. Um, they said that the RPA really enhanced their productivity and their staff time. Okay, free up the staff time to perform more value-added tasks. It's efficient, efficiently and accurately transfer your data, our data from one worksheet to another. And remember, they can do it 24 by 7. 
Okay. So it's with the RPA is really spare them from working on repetitive tasks so that they can focus more on the value added activities. Okay. They are very happy that I work on with the job that is done by the um, Singapore Police staff and the students. So thank you so much, Daryl and David and with the students as well. Um, SBS, they also send out the testimonial. You know, they say that this, um, the one task that in the past, they used to at least one week to generate, check and encrypt. Now, it just takes a few minutes for them to run the RPS script and voila, you got all the job done, right? So again, um, they thanks NCSS and Singapore Poly for their support and guidance along the way. Okay, so RPA is actually transforming our organizations internally. Okay, that means that we are all, you know, internally, we actually dress very nicely. Um, you know, we put on, you know, we, we lost weight, you know, we look very pretty and everything. But you also want to transform yourself externally, right? And you want everybody to know your transformation. You cannot wear so pretty clothes and then nobody can see, right? And that's why we come to the digital marketing, okay? From internal transformation, you want to transform yourself externally. You look pretty and everybody know how pretty you look like, okay? And that's where um, the digital marketing consultations comes about. Okay, later on, um, the lecturer from the Singapore Poly will also share about the digital marketing, how important is brand awareness, okay, how you can actually increase your outreach and fund basings, and you can spread your message, you know, to your clients, to your volunteer, and it costs much less than any other marketing channels. Okay, including video productions, you know, um, all the content creations, etc. And these are the two lecturers that will actually share later on the digital marketing. So without further ado, I'm going to call out our RPA heroes here, David Tan and Daryl O, um, a, a lecturer from the Singapore Poly who will share on the RPA robotic process automation. Over to you, David. Thank you very much, uh, Anna. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is David Tan. I'm a lecturer from the Singapore Polytechnic School of Business. So me and my colleagues, we are delighted to be here to share with you how RPA and digital marketing can uh, enhance your service sector. So I myself will talk about RPA and then later on my colleague Daryl Ao, he will be doing a demonstration as well as talk about some of the use cases uh, that we have gone through. Uh, you'll see a name just below David Tan and Daryl Ao Tang Ka Hyong. So this is an esteemed colleague of ours who will join us for the Q&A se session for RPA. He is what we call uh, an RPA Grandmaster, Grand wizard, godfather, grandfather, uh, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he's just as good as it gets in RPA. Uh, on the right, uh, you'll see another name very similar to mine, uh, David William Tan. He's our esteemed colleague from the Media Arts and Design School. Uh, so he and Jonathan Locke, uh, who's another SB Business School colleague, will be talking about digital marketing. Uh, let's just give you a little background. In the business school, we have four diplomas, uh, business administration, human resource with psychology, accountancy, and banking and finance. Regardless of what uh, course our business school students come from, they are required to do a huge number of technology uh, subjects. In fact, our students spent a total of one semester's worth of technology subjects with us. So they spent three years with us, that's six semesters, total of one semester's worth of IT subjects. So they'll learn basic programming, such as Python. In some cases, uh, they learn SQL as well. Everyone is trained in RPA codes, uh, visual basic. Some students also learn financial technology. Uh, we train them in business analytics, data analytics, dashboard analytics, predictive analytics. Uh, so all in all, quite a lot of uh, technology uh, modules are infused into the curriculum. So what you see in front of you, these are student projects undertaken by the students in their third year. So during year three, 
this is the phase where they go into internships and they do final year projects. So what you see in front of you, these are actual projects that we work in with uh, industry clients. So some of our industry partners are stat boards, ministries, uh, government agencies, small medium enterprises, sometimes large enterprises. We've also done RPA uh, for financial institutions and banks as well. So there is a diverse uh, array of uh, clients. Uh, sometimes people ask us, you're business school students, why do you need that much uh, technology? Well, the universe is basically digitally transformed. So we have to have our students future ready for their own career, as well as to be contributing to that universe where everybody is digitally transformed. So let's move further into robotic process automation. Studies have shown that 60% of many employees' time in Singapore are spent on primary duties. While that sounds like it's the majority of the work, it's actually a very poor number. It basically means 40% of their time is spent doing mundane, repetitious, and high volume work. And, and that's honestly very terrible. Uh, globally, the numbers seem a little better, 72%, uh, but also not great. 30% uh, of their time are spent on non-essential work. So what does it all mean? On the right, you see some uh, numerical data, $38 billion lost on productivity, and then 48 uh, days per calendar lost all right, on uh, mundane tasks. So that's really uh, quite poor. So in terms of uh, what we see are the challenges for social service sector, they are quite uh, similar to many of the enterprises that we have worked with. First of all, high voluminous work, a lot of manual and repetitive process. Uh, unfortunately, we're still very hard copy and paper, uh, paper documentation type of system. So what all these means is that they are very prone to errors because humans, when we do repetitive manual tasks, we get tired, we lose concentration, so we make errors. And when errors happen, it wastes a lot of time. The process wastes a lot of time. Making errors further wastes a lot of time. And this is a great uh, uh, demotivating factor for many employees. Through our partnerships with many companies, a lot of employees share with us that sometimes you know they quit jobs, not because they hate what they do, but they hate the repetitive work that they have to do and all the errors that come with it. This website, and we'll share this deck with you eventually, you can go to this website. Uh, as we move into RPA, a lot of people have this fear, would I lose my jobs? So I've gone inside this and I've keyed in social workers. You'll see that uh, there's only a 4% chance that your jobs can be eliminated by uh, automation. I think you kind of can expect this because you're in the business of being personable. Right? It's a person-to-person, human-touch uh, industry. Automation cannot replace your job. If anything, automation will enhance your job because they take away all these repetitive tasks, allowing you to focus on the important things, which is community, all right? serving the community. All right, So if you go into this website, you can key in just about anything. Legal advisors, educators, investment bankers, uh, accountants, finance professionals, and you can see the percentages will vary uh, greatly. All right, so uh, robots. So robots, are they enablers or are they a threat? All right, so the answer is obviously that they are enablers. All right, so they will enable us to do our work faster, all right, and do it much more accurately. Okay, so we need to dispense with the ideas that you see in front of you. Hollywood has programmed us in a negative way, whether it's the Matrix or Terminators or Prometheus, you know, the Android and Prometheus. Hollywood has programmed us to think that machines are evil, insidious. All right, so none of which is going to happen. You know, the, the automation that's going to take place, you tell them what to do, that's exactly what the robot is going to do. All right, so all this self-awareness, uh, machines become self-aware, machine learning, artificial intelligence, they suddenly fall in love with their creator, they want to have a family, have children, they want to kill their creator, they want to wipe out mankind. So you should get rid of all those ideas that Hollywood has uh, uh, instilled in us. Okay, so throughout the course of our project work with many industry partners, uh, people share with us that they spend sleepless nights worrying about work, but not their primary work. They spend sleepless nights worrying about 
all these man mundane tasks that they have to do tomorrow. And therefore, I have no time to do the real work that I got paid to do or that I signed up for. So what's their dream for many such people? They hope that turn on their work computer, click of a button, someone out there or something out there is doing all these high volume tasks for them. They can then enjoy their breakfast. They can then get on the phones, talk to the real stakeholders. In your case, talk to your donors, talk to the people that need your social service uh, 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 agencies, right? Talk to your own colleagues to see how you can improve, how you can serve the community better. Do all the important things while the robot is running uh, uh, your tasks in the background, uh, including even self-improvement, right? Finding time to do self-improvement. And at the end of it, your task is completed by a machine. So that, that is the dream for many people. And with robotic process automation, this dream can be turned into reality. So it is essentially a virtual robot, as I've explained. So forget about Schwarzenegger and Terminator and Agent Smith in the Matrix. It's a virtual robot, a software that exists in your laptops that is going to mimic your human action. So if your task requires you to frequently go into SAP or Z uh, Zero or QuickBooks to download information, all right, copy information from Excel and paste it into a report, generate emails. This is what the robot is going to do for you in reality. So it's mimicking your hand actions on your computer. In terms of uh, why you should do it, well, the ease of RPA adoption is really, really very simple. Uh, it is low cost. Uh, we'll talk more about this UiPath, but UiPath is essentially the software in Singapore Poly Business School that we teach our students. Uh, it's uh, got community version and it's legitimate. Now you're not downloading free games on uh, handphone and then you have to watch a bunch of commercials every time you want to play the game. So the community free version really can handle fairly complex tasks, all right? So unless you have extraordinarily complex tasks, then you need to move to enterprise versions. But if not, the community versions offered by UiPath, uh, as long as the enterprise has a turnover of less than US 5 million, all right, and, and more than 250 employees, the community version is very, very uh, usable for just about anybody, all right? So it's really, really very, very low cost. Uh, it's a uh, low code, all right, somewhat uh, code free, lah. low code, anyone can pick this up. Uh, myself, uh, Daryl Ao, and my colleague, Tenka Hyung, all of us were essentially business finance and accounting lecturers, and we went for the courses a day and a half, uh, two-day courses, and we started from there. Uh, it's a drag and drop type of programming. Uh, uh, my colleague Daryl will show you later. Drag and drop type of programming. It's not like uh, hard coding, right? In the Python and the R's and the C++ and the SQLs. It's not hard coding. It's uh, low code. It's thirdly, very non-invasive. So it, it's just an app in your laptop. You click on it. You mimic your actions to copy information from Excel to generate reports. So in that process that the robot is working for you, your efficiency and effectiveness will be greatly enhanced because robots don't get tired as long as there's electricity feeding it. Uh, so very efficient, very effective, leaving you as the end user being able to focus on things that matter to you most, the value added and the critical issues. So studies have also proven, right? 95% of corporations have found that yes, indeed it improves uh, productivity. Uh, the error reduction, it's a great help because when errors are lower, then the compliance with regulatory requirements greatly improves. So 93% uh, of the firm saw improved in compliance. And of course, on the right, thirdly, more than 80% of the companies saw uh, a reduction in uh, costs. All right, so I hope uh, I've got you thinking in terms of uh, what you want to automate. So the next step is to identify suitable processes. So let's be real here. Not everything can be automated, all right? Not everything can be automated. So the, an important skill is to identify suitable processes. And we go with uh, these five uh, fairly straightforward uh, characteristics. First of all, they should be repetitive. But of course, right? Because if it wasn't repetitive, it's not a pain in the neck. 
then there's less incentive to uh, automate. So yes, RPA is great for things that you need to do every day, every week, every month type of uh, reports. Secondly, it should be rule-based. All right, so as much as Hollywood wants you to think that machine learning and AI, they are brilliant, they'll be self-aware, robots are clever, but yet they're also stupid because they will only work based on the rules that you give them. For example, you know your organization's uh, GST permutations. So that can be inputted into the RPA. And then when the RPA is running, it will compute all the relevant uh, GST for you. Uh, thirdly, uh, data has to be structured. So coming from SAP, coming from standard documents like standard Excel, uh, standard registration forms, application forms, uh, human resource forms, timesheets, things that are structured data, right? So that's a fairly important criteria. Uh, things that are prone to human error. So this is obviously one of the great benefits. Whatever task that you're doing that is... Uh, tedious and loss of concentration results in a lot of uh, errors. That's uh, excellent. And last but not least, things, processes that work across different systems. We all know it gets very uh, difficult when you have to open download information from a certain source, move it to Excel, move it to Word, generate some emails, create another form that's working across uh, different systems. So with machines, these are done seamlessly and effortlessly while you enjoy yourself uh, in the office, right? The worst machine, machines will just work uh, for you. Okay, in some of the questions that uh, some of you have asked when you fill in your registration form for today's webinar, some of you have asked what kind of uh, processes are ideal for RPA. So we are showing you uh, only the accounting and finance and HR, uh, obviously, the possibilities are very, very endless. Whether it's supply chain, uh, people are using it RPA for marketing as well to gather information on web traffic, uh, automatic sending of marketing information to their target audience, analyzing market survey research information. So there's plenty of other uh, usage beyond just what I'm sharing here. So what I'm sharing here is, of course, the accounting and finance, data entry, collections, generations of accounts receivable uh, on the personnel management side, uh, management of timesheets as well. So it's quite uh, limitless, right? You're welcome to go and Google, right? Just go and search uh, what are the process that you can uh, RPA. Okay, so uh, you know by now that we use UiPath in Singapore Polytechnic. We've tried different uh, packages. And uh, from my experience, this is dynamic, all right? And uh, it's user-friendly. And of course, being uh, uh, the fact that it has a community version makes it uh, really uh, useful. All right, so we teach our students a community version. And like I said earlier, the free version can handle fairly complex stuff. So unless there's a process that is ultra complicated, and we do get that. Uh, we do have partners that need to use the UiPath Enterprise versions. Then we will, uh, we can help you to connect to UiPath, but we should uh, say this because we are recording this uh, uh, webinar that uh, Singapore Poly, we are not authorized dealers of UiPath. We don't get uh, a cut of the commission. Uh, we're not paid sponsors. We're not even unpaid sponsors of any kind. We just use it for the obvious reasons that uh, we've mentioned earlier. All right, so I think some of you have also mentioned what are some of the, the in your questions, uh, the pre-webinar questions, what are some of the other softwares uh, in the market? Blue Prism is a fairly uh, famous one, all right? So some, some of the big banks here, they use uh, Blue Prism. Uh, Automation Anywhere, that's another uh, a famous one, all right? So, but as far as uh, we, we research, UiPath is uh, the market leader. Okay, so uh, if you've decided you want to automate some of your processes, where does the change have to start from? So as we all know, in any organization, the changes have to begin right at the top. So the group of people on the left that you see on the screen, uh, higher ups, they have to learn RPA and then they'll understand what are the resources that is required to transform. Scripting and coding is easy. Change management is a mindset and that requires senior management to come on board. This transformational leadership is very, very important. Senior management must get the staff to buy in. Uh, people are afraid, 
right? You say, oh, what if I automate? Will my job be made uh, redundant? So psychological safety nets have to be uh, there as well. So it's very important, right? So there's no other way to mince our words here that the management from the top has to prepare everybody for that journey, have to prepare that, okay? The managers, the people with an overview of all the processes, they're very important because as you start your transformation journey, the managers will have that overview. They will prioritize and identify what are the processes that can start off, all right? And ultimately, they'll lead the implementation, all right? So they also need to learn. And of course, the people on the right, the day-to-day -day users, it would be good for them to go for uh, RPA training as well. All right, so it sounds like a dream, but yes, it is. Okay? You, you start a button, the robot does the work, you can have your breakfast, you can move on to your primary task, all right? Uh, and then your work will be completed. Okay, so I'm also happy to share at this point, uh, these are three of the pilot RPA projects that we have done for Blossom World, HCSA and Taihua Kwan. So for Blossom World on the left, we have done uh, a thing work in terms of their classroom management. So sorting of emails, preparation of certificates for their students, as well as a class registration. For HCSA, it was a very different angle. It was for their HR side, preparation of uh, employment acceptance, performance bonuses, and job application. For Taiwa Kwan, it was student management. We customized uh, the sending of messages uh, on WhatsApp and emails. So on this, I will soon hand over to Daryl, my colleague, who is an RPA uh, guru and wise man as well. So he's going to go through all these use cases as well as do a live demonstration of how the UI path will work. All right, so my pleasure to hand over to Daryl now. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, thank you, David. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, some of the different use cases that we have done for some of the SSAs. Uh, our first use case is to send customized WhatsApp messages to uh, different people. So before RPA, um, what the staff have to do is that they have to manually add in people's handphone numbers into the handphone. And then they have to select each person's name and then type in the message one by one, press send, and then repeat the same message again for all the different volunteers or for the different people that they want to contact. So with RPA, now you can just update the whole handphone list in the Excel file. Then you can just press start and then the robot will send the messages for you. Okay, so here is a video of how the robot works. So here you can see is the typical message that you want to send. Here is the uh, the people's names and the email and the WhatsApp uh, numbers that you want to send. Press start, and then you can get a robot to choose whether you want to send it with a document, with a picture, with a video, or a GIF. Okay, so in this case, we are sending a document together with a customized message. So as you can see here, the first message has been sent to Felix. It will now send to the next person, which is um, so what's the next person's name? Uh, Emily. Yeah, so then we can just, if the, if, even if you have 10,000 WhatsApp numbers, the robot will just keep running over and over again, and you can actually send out uh, messages to each of your uh, people, uh, and you can customize the message too with their names, okay? So this is one example of uh, how you can use uh, RPA to automate your work. Uh, we have another example. So in this example, uh, we have to uh, prepare the performance bonus letters. So in a typical HR uh, process, you have to, get the word documents, you need to fill up all the different details with the person's name, with the person's uh, day, uh, details, uh, how much salary, what's the percentage increment, so on and so forth. So it's a lot of copy and pasting of data. And then after that, you need to save the document as a PDF, and then you want to encrypt the document with a password, for example, with the IC number. So now with RPA, it is very straightforward. All you just need to have is an Excel file with the, with the details that you need. Then you just need to run the robot. The robot will prepare all the documents for you. So let me show you a video of how the robot runs. So here you can actually uh, write the, um, you can actually rank the, let me just pause the video. So actually here for the different staff, you can actually uh, tell them how much they're going to get, what's the next salary, uh, what is the different performance bonus that it has, that they, uh, performance rating that they have accordingly. Okay, so from here, just save the Excel file, run the robot. The robot is actually able to read through the whole Excel file and generate for each staff their performance bonus letter. So as you can see, you can see the Microsoft Word document being uh, popping up on the screen for you. But what the robot also does is to encrypt it with the PDF, as you can see now on the screen. 
Okay, so as you can see here, for example, uh, Ming Chun here, his details are already filled in, his performance grading is already done, and in the PDF, the document is already password protected. So this will definitely save you a lot of time. Okay, we have another example here. So for this SSA, um, the SSA had to track um, the, the students who uh, come for classes, and they actually want to track who are the absentees so that they can provide the relevant follow-up. Uh, and, to, to, uh, and ask them also why are they not here, so on and so forth, okay? So before RPA, it was very tedious because they had to log in into the website, they had to download the different uh, Excel files, and then you have to uh, see based on the attendance who, uh, in one week, how often the child has come to school, how often have they not come to school. So based on the different rules, then they need to identify who are the absentees, and then they contact them one by one. So it was a very manual and tedious process. With RPA, you don't have to do this anymore. Just download the Excel file, okay? And once you already know who, which students belong to which teachers, the robot is actually able to read through the attendance and give the teachers the names of the students that they already need to follow up. So here's a video of it running. So here's the teacher's emails, and these are the students that are assigned to the different teachers. Once you have the Excel files with the attendance, just run the robot. So the robot will process all the information for you. You can choose the correct week, and you just wait. Yeah, so as we wait here, the robot is processing the information and it's now going to send an email to each teacher. And each teacher will receive uh, the, the Excel file, which contains the list of absent students that they need to follow up. So then this really allows the teachers to really focus on the following up of the absentee students instead of spending so much time trying to identify who are the absent students. Okay, we have uh, one, last, uh, show, one last use case to show you. So uh, this is the preparation of certificates. So for example, when you have a lot of volunteers that come to help you with your different programs, you need to prepare the different certificates to thank them for helping you. So in the past, there's a lot of copy and pasting of data from uh, into, the, into the template and then you need to set, save it, so on and so forth, okay? With RPA, it is so simple now. All I just need is the names of all your uh, participants and then you can just run the robot, okay? So this is how it works. Uh, once you've got the names of the different people, okay? And then you can just run the robot. All right, so from here, you can see the different um, templates, the certificates will be filled up and you also can save it as a PDF. Okay, so that's it, we are done and they are all inside here. Okay, so if you think about it, this, all, all these things look so wonderful, right? Is it very hard to do this? How easy is it to do this? So let me show you now how easy it is to automate your work. Okay, so hold on, uh, let me just stop my share and let me share my screen with you. Okay, so this is the software that we have. The process I'm going to show you is the one that, I, that we just showed on the preparation of certificates. So for example here, I have a name list of all the different names that I want to prepare the certificate for. And here is a certificate template that I want to prepare the certificates for. Okay, so let me do a live demonstration to show you how simple it is to automate this process. So this is the UiPath software. First thing we need to do is to read the Excel file. So I just search for a read range, which is basically to read my Excel file. Okay, so I can make it bigger so you can see what I'm doing. So here, just choose the Excel file. So for me, it's on my desktop live demo. I've got one Excel file here. Um, the sheet name is actually here, sheet one. So I'm just going to put here sheet one for you. I'm going to read the whole Excel file. So I'll just read the whole thing. And then I need to save this into a memory box because it's a variable. Okay, so let's call this data table one. All right, now, so once I've read, I've read the Excel file, I want to process all the Excel files row by row. So I'm going to search for each row. Okay, so it's for each row in data table. Okay, so for every row in just now the DT1, which is what I saved from my Excel file, I want to read the name. I want to get the name. So to get the name, I just search for a get row item. So how it works is that for every current row, my column name, so my column name is name, N-A-M-E here. I'm just going to put N-A-M-E. Okay, I'm going to save it into a memory box called name so that uh, I, I can use it later. All right, now, so once I save all the names, I can close my Excel files. I now want to duplicate my template so that I can recycle this, okay? So it's very simple, just copy the file, which is my template file. So I'm going to copy my template file. I'm going to choose my template. So my template was here, uh, just now in 
live demo. Okay, so it's gone. Let me just find it here. Uh, live demo. Here, certificate template. Okay, so this is the template. I'm going to copy here. I'm going to rename the template so that you know this certificate is for which person's name. So I'm going to put certificate for, and the name is just now what I have saved earlier, and it should be a .docx document. Okay, so it will now duplicate the templates, and each template will now be named certificate for Daryl, certificate for David, so on and so forth. All right. Okay. So uh, lastly, I just need to replace the document. So uh, replace the, the text inside, the name inside the document. So this is the document that I'm going to create. I want to replace the name here, inside here. So therefore, I'm going to just put this here like that. Okay. And replace it with just now the variable name, which I've already saved for all the different names. That's all. Okay. So I just need to close the template. Okay, here is my folder. Oh, let me just go to my folder. There's nothing here. I'm going to run the robot. So please don't blink. This, it will show you how fast the robot is. I run the robot. Just don't blink. It's done. When I go to my folder, everything is already created. I just need to press open up one of the certificates. And you can see that all the names have already been replaced nicely for you. Okay, so this is how simple it is to automate your work. So I hope you're interested. And if you want to learn how to do this, we have an RPA training customized uh, just for the NCSS sector. Okay, so this is uh, for internal transformation. I'm going to, with RPA, you can definitely transform a lot of processes. I, now we're going to look at the digital marketing and that will help you with your external transformation. So I'm very glad to share. I have two colleagues, Jonathan and David William Tan. They are both uh, lecturers uh, teaching digital marketing and I'll hand over the time to David. Thank you, Daryl. Um, allow me to share my screen. I hope you can hear me and you can see my slides. Yeah, okay. we can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take a breather. So what you learn on RPA is fantastic. You actually reinvent what's your internal. Let's look at digital marketing for your external. Yeah. Now, for digital marketing, you realize that in the digital world, it is a very noisy place. Yeah. In fact, it's so noisy that I think even us as end users or consumers, we, we are we are so good at swiping left and right, up and down. Uh, we are constantly looking for the X symbol when there's X pop up, you know, just looking for the X and just shut it off. Or are you like me when you're on YouTube? You're just waiting for the yellow bar to deplete when the, the ad is playing, or if not, the skip ads button. So the, 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 the world is full of messaging and messages, and, we, and people are getting smarter and smarter, smarter in distilling all those messages. So the key thing is, who do we say it to, what do we say, and how to say it, and when to say it. It's critical, isn't it? Yeah. So my question to all of you here is, to all your organization, your brands, are your audiences actually listening to you? Are they actually looking forward to hear your message, to receive your messaging every day? So the key here is I want to share in digital marketing, it goes back to the core, we as human beings, you know, that we love stories. We all love a good storytelling, yeah? So to instill a good storytelling because that in, in the end actually builds a belief and a loyalty and ultimately they are into your rituals. Now, it sounds a bit abstract, let me elaborate. Now, let me start from the beginning, the dawn of man. As men love stories right from the beginning, you can see all these cave drawings. And they're, they're not just drawings of any kind, but most of, most of them are actually animals. So here comes the shaman, goes into the darkness of the cave with a torch. And he spent long hours just to feel the relief of the cave. And then when a particular relief, it feels like a mammoth or bison, and he paints over it. Yeah. And of course, this shaman is also a creative person who usually know how to chant with, with instruments. And you invite all the hunters into the cave. And in the darkness of the cave, the fire flickers, you know, the animals comes alive and not just with the, the visual, the, um, the sound, because the shaman begin to chant and as much as they even feel the animals. The whole idea here is to boost the morale of the hunters. Knowing during that time, during the Stone Age, right, um, it's very much a community living. The survival of the, the community depends on the hunters, um, the, the food that 
the, the, the hand back, isn't it? So in the end, they realize the shaman has to give them the morale boost. Yeah. So in even in in all religions, for all any religion to actually instill in our minds, it all starts with stories, fairy tales. As a child like myself, or for those of you who have children, you know, how do we teach children honesty, courage, you know, bravery, um, and all other moral values? We all we are we are all educating them through stories. I give you an example. This is a MRI scan. It's very intimidating. Yeah, the humming of the, the machines is, is just as intimidating. So imagine with me, if I'm going to put a child on this machine and say, oh, you're going to go through this scan, the child will, will be full of anxieties. So how to actually make this child feel calm on this process of scanning, if not even enjoying the process? The answer is still storytelling. So in this case, with this, v, uh, with this image over here, you can tell that the, the child will be enjoying because it is on a yellow submarine, you know, going to the bottom of the sea for an adventure, seeking sunken ships, exotic animals, and fishes. So a storytelling like that suddenly it just changed the whole perspective. It gets the audience wanting to be involved in this process. Likewise, you know, for digital marketing, it's not just about the technology; it's about integrating a good brand narrative into different social media platforms, in the end, the audience start listening to you. All your messaging becomes music, like music produced by your shaman. So each brand has a unique story. No two brands are the same. No two organizations are the same. Each of them has a unique DNA. You know, each brand is like a person, how you carry yourself every day, how you use the choice of words, um, your knowledge, your, heritage, your culture and heritage, everyone is different so in order for take on a digital pa um, packaging uh, sorry the digital marketing package is to actually go back to the core of the brand so what you really stands for so where we can work on what your, your brand dna is and from there we work from there and then we build from the basic skeleton and we sort of build all the muscles around it in terms of your um, messaging your your narrative your images so in the end what we we want to do is hopefully, hopefully that the brand can stand up from what is the unique offering is. So do you know what is unique in your brand? Do you know what your unique offering is? And are we using the right words, images, uh, moving images to tell the right story? Or does your uh, consumers, your, your volunteers, you know, your members actually wake up in the morning and, and, and decide to have a, a parcel delivery and, and that's the first brand that pops on your mind, you know? Or how do you actually communicate the brand uh, of what you can do and do best? So in short, basically is that what we're trying to do is to bring the distance between the brand and your, the receiver of this message closer and closer to the point the brand becomes part of their life. Every day in their routines of their life, they look forward to your messaging. They look forward to when they go to the social media platforms, they look forward to what you actually, um, uh, uh, they, 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 they can't wait for what you're gonna unveil to them so that therefore they can define themselves with your world. Now, deriving a strategic brand narrative it's definitely a delicate process. So allow me to share with you, a communication is not a linear engagement. You see, we, for, a, for us humans, we have five senses. And for digital marketing, it actually encompasses two of the five senses. In this case, uh, you get sound and you got visual. Visual tends to be a stronger uh, sensory channel. However, you see how our brain works is that the more sensory channels that integrate together, the more we remember a brand. Like for example, you to see a colleague in the office, it's not just the visual, it's the sound that the person talks and even to a point of perfume that the person is wearing. So in this case, the more memory channels uh, that is inputted to the brain, the more, the higher the awareness, the more, the higher the brand we call that the, the end, uh, the target audience can actually recall your brand. So in SP, we have students from different diploma, basically in um, visual editing, um, they into illustrations, uh, graphic designs, UX, UI, and to research copywriting, and so on and so forth. Where we have students from different specializations able to come together under, uh, to, to, we actually have an agency to form a team. And then we actually crack the code 
what is the, what is the, the, the brand DNA and from there on work on the strategy for your uh, brand. So um, for the digital marketing package, it, it works something like that. So we start from the left, um, which is research and analysis. And you can see right down there, we from brand DNA all the way until the, the decision making process. And where we've got to see out all the, the insights from there, and then we move on to the communication blueprint, where we can transform all those insights into a central big idea, an overarching, um, uh, basically a theme for that narrative. And, and then of course, with that, we have also have the integrated marketing communication, or in short, we call it IMC strategy. So once we, we have, that as a base, we were going to work on the creative proposals, where we're going to work on the mood boards, um, we work on a, a copywriting and so on and so forth, imageries, whether imageries or the choice of words, the choice of the imageries to come up with a, a, a formidable creative proposal. In this case, we can see the list here uh, from two co corporate videos or two video contents to four to eight social media posts. And you can see the list is down there, what we can do. Uh, and then from that creative proposal, once it's approved, we, went, we will go to the next stage, with the, which is the creative development. And where we, we're gonna develop the remaining, we're gonna go to a, a recce, the places to cover the events. Um, and in the end, we're gonna compile everything together with the approved uh, creative proposal, and we will deliver the files in the end. Now, the, the length of the, the, the duration, it varies according to the campaign, uh, whether it's three months or six months. So we need to work with you uh, because everyone has a different needs. Everyone has a different stage in their brand health. When I say brand health, every brand has a lifespan. So we need to understand where your brand is at this point of time. Are you a power player or you're just a new brand or you have been around, but you want to rejuvenate the brand? Different, um, brands has different um, needs uh, that we need to um, deal with. So these are just some of the projects we have done. As you can see, there are videos, there are graphics, there are illustrations, uh, even down to print, uh, websites, um, of course, social media platforms. So both, um, we have clients from both private sectors and public sectors, but I just want to narrow down to two. Now, one is Sunday, and the other one you can see here is a, is an organization I cannot disclose because currently the campaign is still running. So um, they have informed me that um, for the the feedback to not colored by you know uh, the the disclosure, so it's better not to disclose. So we protect our clients uh, in this case. So let me just move on to that secret uh, organization. So basically, they want to promote what is good um, in terms of, um, uh, uh, for Singaporeans. So what they do um, is that they want to know um, for Singaporeans what is good to them, what is a good company, what's a good neighbor, what's a good breakfast. So basically you can see that website is done and there's a quiz for Singaporeans to go out there and actually input and compare uh, results. And top of that, uh, we have a street interviews um, that we ask people to actually to, in, to give their inputs, to, to give us a, a, a further push to this campaign. And on top of that, uh, we have also um, Facebook and Instagram, as you can see over here, right? To actually push the, the message out there. So in the end, to receive all these data, and that's why the organizations um, has told me that um, we shouldn't disclose it because we want the data to be uh, uh, not colored in this case. Now, um, Sundeck is an organization that uh, we're currently working. It's also the NCIS uh, pilot program. Um, again, we are currently working on their video contents, and you can see here the kind of amount of document documentations that we have done. Um, down to you can see the chart over here. We are actually doing a positioning of the brands and we, uh, the competitor studies and the basic research about what Sundeck all about. And then we're going to work into even the the colors, the shots, the art directions for the video contents. So everything runs seamlessly right from the core. So we need to know what's the core values of the brand and then how we spin off from there. So even just a video content like that, it takes, a, 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 I would say, a pretty uh, complex pro process to actually to derive, even down to the mood boards. And just to share with you, I just received uh, messages from my students that um, they're sending over the latest uh, 
uh, keyframes and uh, the scripts. So um, this project is currently ongoing. So as you can see the process, we have kind of reached at a big idea. Once the conceptualization of the mood box script, I think is done, we're ready to see the client again. So um, in short, don't create noises. Let your brand shine like this lens over here where you can see to the end of the horizon, you know, with one side and one sound. And hopefully um, not just with our software, we have hardware in our schools like um, video um, recording studios, the green screen I can see on the left here. And uh, even we have support from our tutors and colleagues to, to actually uh, look over these um, projects. With that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much. I'll just pass the time to Jonathan. All right, let me quickly share my screen. All right, thanks, David, for sharing more about branding. So you can see there's actually a lot of exciting things that we can actually do um, on the digital marketing space. So if we take a step back and look at the broader perspective, what is digital marketing? So digital marketing is actually making use of the internet and all the various online-based digital technologies to actually promote the different brands, the different products, and the different services. So what I've done here is I've actually taken a few screenshots. So on the left, you can see this is actually one of the very first few banners on the internet. Um, and this was actually out in 1994. So back then, they, they actually received a lot of click on just this banner. So fast forward all the way to 2022, you can see nowadays the content has actually evolved to something that is a bit more clearer. So in this case, you can see Adidas is actually trying to promote their shoe. And here you can see Singda is actually trying to promote some of the plans. So what is the difference? I think the difference is that the, the environment we live in now is actually more competitive um, and we need our content to be clear. So the click-through rate for all this content is actually a lot lower as compared to it being released in 1994. All right, so if we were to look at just purely Singapore, so Singapore, we have about 5.92 million people and the number of people using the internet actually stands at 92%. So that actually tells us a good percentage of the Singapore population actually can be found through the internet. And if we, do, if we were to dive more into just purely social media, 89.5% of these 5.92 million people are actually active social media users. So where do I get all these numbers from? So all these numbers are actually um, from We Are Social. So they're all readily available information for you to go and have a look. So what does this actually tell us? It actually tells us that um, the digital landscape in Singapore is actually quite mature and it can be used as an avenue for you to tell more about your brand, your product or services. All right, so if we have to look back again in the whole digital marketing landscape, one thing that's actually consistent is that you need to have content. Um, without content, you can't tell a story. So why is content very important? Uh, because content is actually a way for you to relate, to speak to, and to inform your audience. So you take a, if you take a, a look at digital marketing versus traditional media, it is actually very similar and different. So similarity is that it is still content. Um, but in terms of difference, um, digital marketing actually allows you a way to reach out and engage your target audience in a way that um, traditional media can't do. So if you watch a TV commercial, all you can do is probably watch a video followed by maybe searching it up if you're interested. But through content on social media, what you can do is after watching that same video, you could actually um, engage with the content. You can actually press like, comment, or you can even share with others. On top of that, you can also actually click into content um, some of the times, and it will bring you to a specific landing page. So instead of having to search it up yourself, content on digital marketing actually creates a lot of very unique opportunities for the brand that actually helps you with a few key things. So what are these few key things? Firstly, if you think about it, um, having content online actually helps you to discover new things. So if, if you look back, um, at least for me, I've actually discovered a lot of new information uh, ways to cook new recipes on the internet. So having content online actually helps your content to be discovered. On top of that, it actually helps you to engage with 
you know, consumers. So with like the recipe, you can actually see people liking the recipe, people sharing maybe um, maybe slight motivation, modifications in the comments and such. And lastly, from digital content, you can also actually really act on it because sometimes it actually allows you to, to click into it and it brings you to a specific landing page. So why is all this important? Well, um, for me, I'm a bit sneaky. So I think content in the digital space actually helps you more than just um, educating, informing and, and engaging. I think content in the digital space actually also helps you understand your consumers a bit better. Which content do people engage with more? Which content do people actually um, leave more comments? So this actually gives you an idea what um, interest does your consumers have? What kind of content actually engages them better? And what really works be best for your brand? So, for, so thank you, David, for sharing more about digital marketing A. So for digital marketing B, it is actually a four-step process. So it starts from a brand audit, followed by content strategy, editorial calendar, and lastly, content creation empowerment. So I'll be sharing more of this in the coming slides. All right, so uh, before we, I share a bit more details, I'd like to give a big shout out to Teen Challenge. So Teen Challenge is also part of the pilot program um, that actually allows us to work on them so that we can come up with some examples to show you guys how does Package B works. So we'll first start off with a very simple brand audit. So all this, again, it's not something um, that is very difficult. So what we usually do is we want to understand what can be found online. So we'll be making use of things like Google Keywords Planner and some other online tools and services to actually understand um, what is the website traction that you're getting on your website, um, where have your content be featured, and also getting an overview on, from an outsider point of view, what kind of messaging do we get or do we understand based on what we have seen? So we'll be comparing all this against um, organizations that are very similar to your organizations. So on top of that, we also look at the different social media platforms. Um, we'll look at the number of follower counts. we we'll look at the engagement on, on the different platforms. And we will actually compare to see what um, each organization is actually doing better at and what they're actually getting more success so that all these are uh, ideas to help us understand how the brand is actually really performing. So from all this brand audit, we will actually have a better idea um, how the brand is doing, um, what the brand is actually doing well, and what areas the brand actually needs a bit more help in. So from there, we actually come up with a content strategy. So the content strategy will start off with a big idea, which is ultimately just the main message that we would want to communicate to the consumers. So after coming up with the main idea, the main message, we will be looking at who should we be reaching out to or who will be the one actually engaging or seeing this content. So we try to understand a bit better by looking at the potential behaviors, some potential motivations and pain points. And lastly, we'll be coming up with key idea to actually support the main message. Because if you think about it, if I keep saying the same thing over and over again, um, people will naturally become bored and they might become immune to the message. So that's where we'll be coming up with different content ideas supporting that main message. Then after that, we'll be actually putting all this into an editorial calendar so that we can actually um, showcase how is this going to be pushed out on the different platforms. So what is an editorial calendar? Well, an editorial calendar is basically a calendar that actually, um, that actually looks at what, we are, what kind of content we're actually pushing out. So at one quick glance, we will have a bird eye view on how much content we're actually pushing out, um, which content topic are we talking a bit more, and is that enough to actually strengthen the main message that we're trying to bring across to the consumers. So after that, um, after the editorial calendar is done, we'll actually be moving on to the content creation phase. So content creation will be actually making use of Canva. Um, so why Canva? So Canva is actually one of the online tools that has actually a lot of use cases and functions. Um, so this is where I'm also a bit sneaky. I think ultimately my end goal is to actually help every, um, everyone be empowered to actually create content very quickly and swiftly. So Canva has a lot of templates that actually allows you, uh, allows us to actually help to build templates as well so that you can actually create um, content very quickly and easily. So um, we'll be focusing on, make, on actually empowerment because the whole idea is we want to actually empower you so that you can actually create content um, not only for a one-month campaign, but for the foreseeable future. 
Yeah, so this is me being a bit sneaky, making use of online tools and functions. So Canva is just one possible tools, um, but there's also many other tools that um, we can actually look at as well. So maybe just sharing some closing thoughts. So with no content online, there's actually no opportunities for your brands to be found unknown because when people go to any places, go to social media, there'll be nothing about your brand. But when you actually do have some content, it actually creates some opportunities for your brand to be found on the different platforms. So why not start your content creation journey with us today? Okay, so now if so now after we have shared about RP and digital marketing, sounds really exciting, right? So how can we actually, how can SP actually really help? Well, um, firstly, if you're still thinking about RPA, identify people who you feel, people and colleagues and staff who you will actually benefit from this. Attend the customized RPA training for the social service sector, um, which is happening on the 5th and 6th of December with plug and play solutions. So all you need to do is actually sign up with my colleagues, Daryl or David. Um, you can find their email on screen. Um, and I believe the slides will be shared with you at a slightly later date as well. Um, after that, you can actually start trying to implement projects. So you can try doing it yourself, or you, you can actually go through SPFYP projects, which I'll be sharing in the later slides. So ultimately, like what my colleague David has mentioned, ultimately there needs to be a change in mindset. Um, without a change in mindset, RPA, you, you may not get the best out of RPA. All right, so for SPFYP projects, um, we do have a few options where we can actually help you guys as well. We do have final year projects, which will be usually taken by one class and, and one lecture. So that will usually happen during our normal semester, which is from April to August and October to February. Um, on top of that, we can also explore internship. So our internship is usually for a duration of 22 weeks. And it usually happens from March to August and September to February. We still have good agency, which I'll share in the coming slide. And you can also engage our SP lecturers for consultancy projects. All right, so what is this student agency that I talk about? Well, student agency is basically students doing their internship with us. So we actually operate as a marketing agency to actually come up with marketing solutions for the industry. So this actually gives them a lot of very unique exposure. And we do not limit the scope to what we can do, but we focus more towards the marketing side. So the scope can include brand audit, market research, all the way to coming up with brand guidelines, video production, and photography. So a quick conclusion. So we do have three project offering. The first would be RPA analytics. So this is really for people who wants to actually save time, um, automate all those um, repetitive tasks so that you can spend your time doing more meaningful tasks. Um, we do have digital marketing A and digital marketing B. So for digital marketing A's, the deliverables will include a brand audit, a digital content strategy, two corporate videos um, with a duration of two minutes each and up to eight social media posts. So for digital marketing B, we'll be still doing a brand audit. We'll come out with a digital content strategy followed by content creation and training so that we actually empower you to create content in the long run. So you might be wondering like, wow, so what's the difference between digital marketing A and digital marketing B? Well, digital marketing A focus on actually more content creation, um, but this is more for um, getting people to help you. Whereas for digital marketing B, our angle is slightly different where we actually want to work with you to empower you to create content for the long run. So we'll be actually um, working with you to create content on Canva as well. All right, so with that, I come to the end of my sharing. So I hand over the time back to our NCSS colleagues. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, wow, a big thank you to all our four speakers uh, from SP for your thought-provoking and inspiring sessions. Let me share my screen. Okay, so um, we note that we are... Uh, we might slightly overrun today, but I think for good reason. So we just want to seek everyone's understanding um, in case we overrun today. Um, but uh, we hope that the knowledge shared by Singapore Polytechnic has inspired you towards digital transformation in your agency. If that's you, um, apart from what SP has shared on how they can help, NCSS is happy to share the following two approaches and resources that you might find helpful. So to assess how well your organization is performing in the seven organizational health domains, 
we do recommend you to take the OHFSS self-assessment. The organizational health framework for social services um, allows SSAs to self-diagnose their current state of their organizational health, identify areas of strength and development so that your SSA is able to plan your capability building efforts more strategically. There are two approaches to this diagnostics. So the first approach involves using the self-assessment tool. SSAs identify two to 10 representatives to complete an online form and findings are consolidated into an organizational health report. The second approach is to engage a third party consultant um, under the organizational health diagnostic scheme to conduct an in-depth diagnostics for your SSA using um, the OHFSS framework. So for the first approach, SSAs can learn more about how to use this self-assessment tool at our monthly OHFSS workshops. Uh, we will go through the genesis of OHFSS and how to use the rating rubrics uh, during these workshops. And because they are held face-to-face, -face, you will also get the opportunity to network with other SSAs uh, and learn from each other on how to use this tool. So if you're interested, you can take note of the um, upcoming dates that are stated in the slide, um, and you can scan the QR code on the screen to register. So uh, my colleague will also add in uh, the link for you to uh, register in the Zoom chat. So granted that the self-assessment tool, as its name suggests, is self-assessed. So SSAs who wish to have a professional third-party assessment of your organizational health can apply for the Organizational Health Diagnostic Scheme, or OHDS. So in OHDS, um, an NCSS-appointed consultant will conduct an in-depth diagnostic using the OHFSS over a period of six months. After that, the consultant and NSSA would develop a three-year strategy document based on the findings. And subsequently, as a deliverable, SSAs will need to identify one plan from the strategy document uh, for implementation within one year. So if you're interested, you can apply via our Singapore grant um, portal, or if you want to know more, feel free to also approach us um, at the end of this session. Um, we will also add in the link for you to find out more in the Zoom chat. So that's all from me. I will hand the time over to Anna to share more about the available resources from the Digitalization Programs team. Hey, everyone. Yeah. Can you see my video? Uh, can you see my slide? I think it's loading. Oh, okay. Maybe let me do one more time. Yeah, you can try again. Thanks, yeah. Anna. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see the funding for SSA? Yeah, can see. Thank Very you. Good. Yeah, I'm sure everyone waiting for this time, right? You can't wait, really. <laughs> I can see from all the chat that, you know, what kind of funding can I get? Can I get it for free and etc. Now, before I come to the funding, I want to tell you one story first, how we actually um, uh, come up with the funding, okay? There are two types of, my, it is my own RPA journey, okay? There are two types of boss who want to make this RPA successful, okay? The first type of boss is like my boss. Um, my boss not here, right? It's okay, right? So, <laughs> so my boss will send all of us to go for RPA training. Okay, we think, why oh, it's so fun. Why oh, so easy? Not that easy, lah, but a little bit as easy, easier than I thought. Okay, it's very fun. I think I can do it. And then we came back. We were so drowned with our work. We totally forgotten and nothing implemented. Okay. <laughs> Another type of boss, is a Kang Ho boss like the Tai Hua Kwan, you know, uh, HCSA or Blossom World. They immediately ask me, Anna, can you get someone to do for me? Yeah. So the, we actually get the um, SP, uh, Daryl and David and the team to come and implement RPA. And after that, we also train the staff to do it well, you know, to do the RPA. Within three months, all the RPA are up. And for six months now, our department RPA haven't up yet. So you know what funding is more suitable, right? <laughs> because of this, hence we launched this consultancy subsidy for you, okay? Um, we will have 80% of funding for projects, 
okay, whether it's RPA or digital marketing, and it's the cap at 6K per project. You might be wondering how come only 6K? RPA is 20K, 100K, 200K, right? So here you are. The cost that RPA that developed by the Singapore Polytechnic is actually it's a huge range and it's very low bono prices. Okay, it range from 1K to 6K depend on the complexity. Okay, whereas for the digital marketing, it depends on whether it's a package A or package B. As you said just now, right? If you need your video to be developed by someone, you know, then maybe it's package um, B will be better. 6K. Now, this core funding is 80%, kept at 6,000. Okay, you can apply multiple projects, but kept at 30K per SSA. Okay, now your pricing schedule will be provided um, after the quotations from the consultant. When I say consultant here, it means that uh, it's Singapore Poly here. Okay, now uh, how is it the payment? You will pay full amount to them because they will bill you after it's completed. Okay, then after that, you can come and disburse to NCSS. Okay, we will reimburse all of them at one time upon the completions, uh, the submission of the reports and you know, satisfactory assessment and everything. And who is eligible? NCSS members or MSF funded home? Um, this is just a little bit of um, a more info, okay? Um, it's rec for the RPA, it's recommended if let's say you want to improve your productivity um, by automating your manual and repetitive process. Bear in mind the RPA that, uh, that you see here, it's just a very, very tiny process that you see. There's a lot more processes that the RPA can do, okay? That you might not be aware of. You can be show you the simple one, but there's a lot more complex one, you know? For example, you have some system to another system, you want to copy and paste instead of um, using, uh, downloading the Excel and then uploading again, for example. Okay, but what is a deliverable that the Singapore Poly will give you? They will give you the, the, the bot itself, the automated processes that have already been created, the script bot. And after that, they'll give you the guide for the completed scripts, okay? And then they will also write a report. The student will write the project outcome reports. And all of this project will be heavily supervised by the lecturer. So you can be assured with the quality because we have already seen it in the pilot. Um, so you can say that, well, maybe I, you know, I wanted to improve my productivity by automating my manual or repetitive process. Okay, then you can apply for this RPA consultancy. If you wanted to get the digital marketing consulting, it's, consulting, it's the same thing. Okay? Um, you can choose either package A or package B. I remember at that time when I talked to Sandek, I'm not sure whether Sandek is here, and he actually came to me and said that, you know, we don't even have a, a good um, corporate videos. You know, we want corporate video that is really represent our brand and it is touching, you know, you can reach out to everyone. And hence we say, okay, why don't we do a pilot and see whether they can develop a video for you and, and looking at your brand, looking at the, what kind of outcome that you want. So they are the expert here. And the same thing with the uh, pilot that we done with the team challenge as well. Um, it recommended for you if let's say you want to create an online presence, you know, a self-sustainable online presence here. Okay. So how do you apply? Very easy. Okay. If you are interested, please set up a meeting with our two uh, hero here, Mr. David Tan and Daryl O. Whether it's RP or digital marketing, you can contact them, okay? This is a direct contact numbers that you can call them or email to them, okay? Schedule a meeting a few times to understand what kind of processes that you wanted to automate and they will actually interview you and see um, whether it's suitable or not, okay? Uh, don't worry, the first few meetings, they won't charge you. Okay. until they will give uh, quotations. Okay, they will give you a quotation or we call it as a project proposal, which include all the scoping and the timeline and the, what is the deliverable and what is the cost. Okay, after you receive the project proposal from the Singapore Poly, you can apply into our SG using COPPASS, okay, on the pay and go consultancy, which you can choose RPA consultancy or digital marketing consultancy. Once we approve, we'll send out the approval, okay? And then you can start the projects and please reimburse at the end of the project when you receive the bill from the Singapore Poly. Okay, 
So the last slide here is just to summarize how you can apply. And I just want to tell you very honestly here, this collaboration is a very special collaboration with Singapore Poly. And to be honest with you, we only um, make a promise to have 20 projects, both um, digital marketing and RPA consultancy. So if you really, really want, okay, please contact David and Daryl okay, immediately after this. Okay, and make sure you are one of the 20 projects that we can actually fund with a very low bono basis. Okay, I'm so excited that we finally can implement RPA and digital marketing in our sector here. Something that I thought it can only be done by the big corporations because of the pricing. So I think, yeah, um, I, um, let me give it back to the faith and we'll go to the next sessions. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Anna. Um, so it's now time for our Q&A segment. Uh, so we see that there have um, been some questions in the chat and um, some of them have been answered already. Uh, so I think at this point, uh, maybe I could start us off with some of the common questions that uh, we have received in your registration forms. Um, but also, if you have a question, uh, this is the time now to ask your questions. Yeah, so um, please feel free to unmute yourself um, and direct the questions to any of the speakers that you would like to um, ask. Uh, Asked questions too. And um, yeah, you can feel free to raise your hand or chime in and unmute yourself at any point in time. Uh, so maybe now uh, we'll just start, my, start ourselves off uh, by one of the common questions that we have identified. Um, so to our speakers today, I think uh, let's start with the RPA one first. Uh, David and Daryl, what are the different platforms or areas that RPA can be used for? Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for that question. I think uh, we, we mentioned this in the slide uh, real quick. I will share my screen. Uh, okay, should be looking at the screen now. Uh, you can see from here, some of the common processes are in accounting and finance, all right? A lot of uh, data entry type uh, payment reports, right? Collections sales order as well as uh, uh, human resource. So, so far uh, we find that these are the, the things that can get people started very, very quickly. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you so much, David. Um, maybe I'll just open uh, questions to everyone uh, to the floor. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. We will have about 10 minutes for this segment. Anybody has any questions? Maybe while, maybe while we are waiting for the questions to come up, I think some of us need to some warm up. Um, I just want to um, advise if you are really keen to implement RPA, um, do send your um, staff to um, attend the RPA training. It's very strongly recommended. Whether you engage consultants or not, it's really important for them to be. Um, uh, inform you know about the RPA you know it will help them a lot uh, first of all the training has been customized really for our sector okay because they've done pilot with us so the script most of the script that is used as a case study there is the one that is used um, they implement in a pilot with our SSE so some of you can even just go back and bring that script and implement immediately. So it's very, very useful but even though let's say you hire the consultants which I strongly recommended um, with the you know with the pricing that they give, you hire the consultant to um, develop a script for you. Still send your staff for the trainings because it will help them to identify more processes, you know, and um, to, to be automated. And and you will they will know how to implement better. And the most important they can troubleshoot in the future. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Um, so I think I also see a question from Jeremy uh, from Carita, Singapore. Uh, so I think he's asked in the chat how to sign up for the RPA training. So I think maybe either our SPRPA speakers yeah, or Anna can, can take them through again. Thank you. Yep, so maybe I can share. Um, this is the RPA class that we have on 5th to 6th of uh, December. So it's a two-day class. 
So uh, when you uh, come for this Sorry, class, Daryl, could you do the full screen, please? I think it's a bit small. Or is it oh, just me? <laughs> sorry. Uh, Thank you. Just one moment. Uh. Uh, let me just share my screen again. Yep. Okay, so uh, this is the slide on the training. So we have uh, training on 5th and 6th of December. It's a two-day, full-day class. So uh, for the first one and a half days, you actually will learn the basic RPA functions, how to do simple things. But in when you learn these functions, you will also learn how to do the actual solutions. So you will actually, in, at the end of two days, you actually have a, really, a real plug and play solution that you can use immediately in your SSA. So what are some of the plug and play solutions that you, can, uh, that you will get during this training? So one of the examples is, uh, for example, the, the preparation of the certificates. I will teach you how to actually very easily prepare certificates. And the same concept can be used to prepare your performance bonus letters. It can be used to prepare any type of word documents very easily. Another plug and play solution is also the automation of emails. So uh, if you want to send uh, customized emails again, for example, Christmas is coming, you want to send uh, Christmas greetings to all your volunteers. Uh, we can actually build a robot that's very simple to just write dear uh, each, each of their names individually and you can email all of them. Uh, the another solution we're going to share is also how to uh, automate the WhatsApp uh, messages. So again, you can send the WhatsApp messages to all your volunteers very easily. So we also cover a lot more other things, but these are just some of the very simple plug and play solutions that you can get on the 5th and 6th of December. So if you do want to sign up for this class, you can just uh, email to me and David Tan, and then we will, we will uh, let you know about more details. How much is the class? Uh, after uh, There's funding uh, for the class um, by... I, I, think, I forgot, <laughs> I think it's the WSG. Yeah, so it's actually uh, very reasonable. Yeah, it should be uh, around $100 after funding. Yeah, okay. So it's, uh, it's, it's very, very reasonable and you'll get the plug and play solutions immediately. Now, uh, I think some of you are wondering exactly how good are the solutions that our students are able to develop for you. I'd like to share that actually last year, our students submitted uh, our solutions uh, uh, in for a competition. So last year, ISCA uh, organized the uh, RPA Hackathon, which is uh, open up to the industry. It's not just for students or IHLs, but it's really for the industry. And so in this hackathon, of the top five teams, uh, four of the teams came from SP. Three of the teams actually came from our uh, students. Uh, one of them actually got third. Yeah, so if you're wondering who is the champion, I am the champion of the hackathon. But it just shows you that really the quality that we have uh, in our school and, and the top solutions that you will get uh, it will be very good and you'll be able to use it very well for your organization. All right. So yeah, this is very simple. Uh, please come for the training. Yeah. Uh, Daryl, someone has asked uh, in the chat, uh, uh, what other runs for 2023 are, are you planning? 2023. Oh, we haven't planned for 2023 yet. We will let you know of the dates. Yeah, but do come for the December one first. Yeah. I just want to add, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that when it comes to attending the training, even at this point, if you have not uh, really had any idea what's a good process to automate or what, and you're just still a little, just getting your feet uh, wet, uh, do come for the December training because after that, I think it will get you started uh, even deeper in terms of identifying what you can do. So I think that would be very useful. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, David and Daryl. Yeah, so I think that also kind of echoes the question that we had earlier on during the session about uh, finding out whether RPA works with web-based applications, right? Yeah, so maybe we would just like to um, echo Daryl's answer that it does. And also, um, if you would like to find out more on how RPA can be applied, then we could also look at going for the December session. Okay, um, so maybe just one last call for any questions from the participants. Don't be shy. <laughs> uh, it will, okay, so someone asked where will the course be helped? It will mm. be helped in SP. Now, actually, to add in, uh, add on to what uh, Faith said, whether uh, RPA can be used for web based, uh, it can. RPA can be used for a lot of other things also. For example, uh, how, let's say even if you want to process PDF documents, you can also do that. You want to process the emails that come in uh, into your the email and you want to sort it out by. Um, the different categories you can do it. So there's so many things that you can do with uh, automation. Uh, what is the most uh, comp so someone has asked a question also, what is the most complex RPA that we've implemented so far? Uh, okay, for me personally, uh, I, I did for a lot of uh, accounting and audit firms also. So I've done uh, this XBRL process, which is uh, copying from the word 
financial statements into this XPR software and then to process the information and then to uh, put the information into a website. So that's one of the most complex things that I've done. Uh, but the students have also managed to do it together with me. So if my students and myself with no IT background can do it, I already think anyone can pick up RPA easily. Yeah. How many reps can SSA send per organization to the training? Uh, there's no uh, limit actually. You can send to your whole uh, team if you want. Yeah, if there's a lot of people, then we'll run two different sessions. Yeah. Do you have to download the software? Uh, yes, you need to uh, go to the UiPath website to download the software and you can use it. Yeah. Would RPA's training be run via Zoom? Uh, no, RPA training will be done face-to-face -face because when the instructor, instructors are there, we can actually help you to troubleshoot on the spot. Yeah, so it will be a face-to-face -face training in Singapore Polytechnic. Yeah, we, we did the online training during the COVID and it's really very challenging for the, the participants because there's a lot of things that you really need the uh, two, three instructors walking around the classroom to hands-on together with you. Yeah. Thank you for the questions. Uh, maybe at this point, I'll just quickly check in if there's any uh, questions on the digital marketing and branding side. Um, feel free to yeah, type in the chat or to ask and unmute yourself and ask your questions. If not, um, yeah, we can, we'll still be able to, uh, I mean, you can reach out to us. We'll, send, we'll show you some uh, email addresses that you can uh, use to reach out to us if you have any further questions at the end of the session. Um, so I think before you go, we would just like to um, ask for your help to participate in the feedback form that we have prepared. So um, thank you to all the SP speakers. Yeah, we will share with you if we receive any questions uh, from the participants as well. Yeah, so um, to the participants, thank you for um, joining us today um, and for participating actively. We um, have put in the feedback form link into the Zoom chat. So we would love to hear from you um, on what you are keen on and how our future sessions can be improved. Um, let me share my screen and we will show you um, the respective email addresses. Okay, so uh, yeah, you may uh, also scan the QR code for the feedback form and contact us at the respective email addresses that you see in, um, this, on the screen if you have any questions and we'll be more than happy to assist you. So um, we have come to the official end of our session today. Thank you everyone for coming again and um, see everyone around in future sessions. Have a great Friday evening and weekend ahead. Thank you.
I think I moved most of the people to the waiting room only. Except those from SP, but I'm not so sure whether all is from okay. SP. Okay. Should be quiet. Uh. Okay, can um, okay. Sorry, oh, you yeah. need to move code, I think. Oh, oh. someone else is it? Yeah, let's Yeah. Yeah, can all of us are uh, the rest should be from SP really. Yep. Oh. Hi everyone. <laughs> hi, hi. Hi. Uh, okay. How was it? How how are you guys Very feeling? Good. Can, Very can we take, good. Yeah. You can guys take one more photo so uh, with our huh? grandmaster Kahyong. Uh. Just now. Oh, <laughs> oh is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, really? oh, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Um okay. Maybe, Ernest, is it convenient to switch on? Hey, wait, uh, David Tan is not here. Wait, let me let me call him. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> David sorry, sorry. coffee already. He didn't coffee already. Yeah. <laughs> he went wow. for his weekend already. Yeah, they're so excited now uh, already. So many want to come on board already. Hopefully, we yeah, will receive them. Um, you'll get a lot of call. <laughs> I got yeah. a few emails already. Yeah, so I, I will oh, wow. channel them oh my God. accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Only RPA, very, very fast one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they are the contact person for both API and digital marketing. Uh, yeah, we yeah. only, so, we so only put on them the, as a two, two of them. The contact yeah, based on the package or then I'll speak to Jonathan and David also. Yeah. yeah. So easier so, to control. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you for your help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think digital marketing sometimes can be quite scary because um ultimately digital marketing is still a form of marketing. It's just that the word digital scares people. Um, yeah. Sometimes just getting started. Once you get started, you naturally get better and better at it. <laughs> Okay, David's in already. We can take a proper photo now. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I actually uh, was re re replying some of the emails that came. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. We can take one more photo with Kahyong just now. We missed, missed him out. <laughs> the earlier oh, one. you missed Kahyong. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, John, you take for us, is it, to post on the... Yep, I'll take okay. it. Okay. Three, two, one. Yep, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, my colleagues yeah. say you guys really charm all the SSA. Eh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, which colleagues specifically? Yeah, my department lah, all inside. Oh. Yeah, like wow, the oppa here really charm us ah. Uh. <laughs> oppa, wow. oppa, the oppa. Yeah, I mean the, the Korean star. <laughs> yeah, the Korean 